government of Cameroon takes the fight against COVID-19 pandemic a step further as the Minister of Transport signs several communiques meting out sanctions on recalcitrant bus and taxi drivers and passengers who will not respect barrier measures against COVID. The chairman of the Social Democratic Front, Ni John Frundi, and members of the Executive Council are meeting in Yaoundé since this morning to come out with strategies of a rebound from a poor performance in last election. For the CRTV Production Center, I am Benin Bumagana. This is the 7.30 News. I urge you once again to put on your face masks, to wash your hands regularly, and to consult a physician or any other health personnel if you notice any symptoms. This is the only way to save lives and to curb the spread of the virus. Once again, good evening. The COVID-19 pandemic is resurfacing in Cameroon and the concerted efforts of the administration and the personal commitment of everyone is crucial if the infection curve must start going down again. This observation emanates from Friday's interministerial committee meeting chaired by the Prime Minister, Joseph Dion Gute. In the following report, Star Building correspondent Christian Che Atam revisits some important figures and recommendations from the session. Friday's meeting of the Interministerial Committee to monitor the government's response strategy against COVID-19, the second to be organized in 2021, came one week after the declaration made by the Prime Minister calling for a reinforcement of barrier measures. If a tentative evaluation of the declaration made during the meeting reveals a noticeable rise in consciousness levels amongst the population, it remains clear that more is needed to ramp up the campaign against COVID-19. That is why during the session, Prime Minister Joseph Jongute recommended an increase in testing for COVID-19, both in public administrations and within the communities, for example, in markets, churches, and bus stations, to ensure early treatment and to break the chain of contamination. The Minister of Public Health and the Minister of Finance have been instructed to work together and remove every impediment to mass testing. Concerning vaccines, the Prime Minister has instructed the Minister of Public Health to pursue modalities for the introduction of AstraZeneca. The Minister of Decentralization and Local Development, for its part, has been called upon to have municipal authorities reactivate control mechanisms which will ensure the respect of barrier measures, especially in public spaces all over the country. The Minister of Transport has been charged with ensuring the effective application of barrier measures in the transport sector, particularly the wearing of masks. And with the threatening social, with the threatening second phase of the COVID-19 pandemic, travel agencies and taxi drivers in Gyaoundé confess that despite the sensitization of passengers to respect barrier measures against the disease, many persons still find it difficult to adhere. Joyce Tata spent a whole day downtown monitoring the situation and prepared this report for the 7.30 News. The COVID-19 pandemic is no joke. After one discovers the face mask has been forgotten at home, grabbing another rapidly is the next move. Sadly enough, not everyone is this conscious. We just keep advising our passengers to put on their mask like the authorities instruct. That's the best we can do. Drivers, managers in some travel agencies, however, do their best to talk to their clients to keep safe by being examples too. We make sure that everything, the buckets, soap, everything is available. We also ask all the customers to wear their face mask before entering the bus. Some passengers are really stubborn. In some agencies, it is a duty of particular personnel to ensure passengers respect anti-COVID barrier measures, even though some turn to be headstrong and do the contrary while on board. 
When they get in the bus, they remove their face masks, but we keep insisting they stop such behavior. I reserve two seats for myself for my journey because due to my health, I cannot put on a face mask. That's how I keep safe. Keeping safe, medics continue to advise not only saves oneself, but the entire community. For COVID-19, is no respecter of persons. And in the sustained fight against the COVID-19 pandemic, the Minister of Transport, Jean Enes Masenangale Bibe, has signed a series of communique outlining sanctions on public transport drivers who continue to overload their vehicles. Alice Mbe spoke to some of the taxi drivers on how to put an end to this mayhem. And here is her report. The dishonesty of transport owners overloading passengers in vehicles has been forbidden by the government, yet the practice persists. I overload passengers because we find things difficult. We are trying to meet up with life. I can't do otherwise. We are searching for what to eat. An empty stomach doesn't listen. Some taxi drivers respect these measures, while others complain it is difficult because of financial problems. The only way they can make ends meet is by flowing the rules. We are overloading because customers come out early in the morning for work. That is the only time we can make more money. We don't do it because we like it, but because life is difficult. Customers don't pay taxes well, so we overload them to have more. We are fathers of families. Notwithstanding such efforts in combating the pandemic, some transport owners and passengers do not respect the barrier measures. And in Bamenda, the Bamenda 2 Council has embarked on an operation to combat the spread of COVID-19 in schools within the municipal area. Under the supervision of the mayor, Peter Chengui, some colleges were disinfected earlier on today. Eric Langmiawo for reports from Bamenda. The Bamenda 2 Council works with the Army Rescue Unit in gradually disinfecting schools following statistics from the Northwest Delegation of Secondary Education indicating a resurgence of COVID-19 cases on school campuses. There are reports of teachers and students infected by the pandemic. We don't want schools to be suspended in this region because that is our priority. That is why we are here out today to disinfect schools, to protect the life of our children, so that they should tomorrow we should take over the country that we want to construct. Yeah. Here at PSS Mancon, there are no cases of the pandemic yet, but school officials are working to keep the coronavirus away from the campus. We are taking all the precautions to make sure that the students respect the COVID-19 laws uh, stated by the state. The Parmenda 2 Council has promised to disinfect all the schools in the council area, and it has also donated anti-COVID-19 kits to the schools. Public service heads in the far north region have been exhorted to work in transparency and in strict respect to anti-COVID barrier uh, to anti-COVID measures. The call was made by the Minister of Public Service and Administrative Reforms, Joseph Lame, during a working session to present the recent innovation in the ministry. Sylvester Atem King reports. Due to the distance between the nation's political capital, Yaoundé, and the far north region, considered as the poorest in the country, a good number of candidates have not been able to travel to Yaoundé for hours of competitive entrance examination organized by the Ministry of Public Service and Administrative Reform. We will not go far to write our concourse or submit our documents. This will help the youth in Mayokani not to spend too much money. To be sure of a conducive environment for the exams, the public service boss was at the divisional delegation of youth and civic education for Mayokani in Kaili, where he noted that all requirements have been met. It should be important to come and see what they have and try to see what we can add. A member of government also cautioned that bribery and corruption do not guarantee recruitment into the public service. It's not important to think that when somebody comes and tell you that give me some money then i will go and negotiate for you to pass an exam it's not true they should never accept that on behalf of the population of mayokani the mayor of kaili saluted the vast reforms that have helped to repair the once bleak image of the ministry of public service and administrative reforms 
Some bureau members of the West Regional Council and the members of the West Branch of the United Council and Cities of Cameroon have exchanged ideas on how they can better collaborate to carry out development projects in the region to better the living conditions of the people. Kelvin Nembo tells us more on that story. The population of the West region is hungry, hungry to eat the fruits of decentralization. This explains why bureau members of the West Regional Council met with members of the West branch of the United Councils and Cities of Cameroon to share ideas on how they can better collaborate to achieve their common objectives. During the consultation meeting, the president of the West Regional Council, Dr. Jules Hille Fokafoka, said it all begins with the elaboration of a strategic development plan for the region, something they are already working on. According to Dr. Jules Hille Fokafoka, similar meetings will be organized frequently, not only with municipal authorities, but administrative and traditional officials as well. Mayors were encouraged to work in synergy with the locals to identify their pressing needs, which they will later forward to the regional council for appraisal. Up in the north region, some traders and persons living around Marche Poisson in Garoua have received donations after the tragedy that befell them in that part of the country. Let's follow more from our correspondents in Sierra TV Garoua. The excitement on the faces of female fish vendors at the Garwa fish market was visible as business magnate Muhammadu Danjuma came to their aid. Frank CFA as assistant after the market was ravaged by fire. They are business people like me. It was necessary for me to do something to accompany their dreams. They are responsible women who cater for their families. I have to accompany them financially so that they can restart again quickly. The event that took place in strict respect of COVID-19 protocol in the presence of the senior divisional officer of the Benue who loaded the initiative and ask the vendors to move to a safer site. I'm using this occasion to remind these business people to be ready to leave this place so that we can reconstruct a befitting market. At the moment, they can move to the other fish market. To the beneficiaries, the humanitarian act from the business juggernaut was very timely. We are very happy for what our brother did for us. The gift was quite symbolic and we will never forget. With this financial aid, the vendors will now go back to business full swing. Farm inputs worth millions of CFA francs have been donated to representatives of farmers groups as well as corporations to boost agricultural activities in the region. This was during the launch of the 2021 farming season in the southwest region. Enanga Menyoli reports. The farm inputs received by representatives of farming groups and cooperatives in the southwest region include machetes, fertilizers, water and spraying cans, among others. Representing Southwest Governor at the ceremony, the Inspector General at the Southwest Governor's Office, Mr. Ngembane Daniel Ekole, reminded farmers that agriculture remains the backbone of the economy of Cameroon. Reason while the government through the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, as well as the Southwest Development Authority Sweda is leaving no stone unturned to assist farmers throughout the year to make sure that at the end of the year the yields will be satisfactory. The southwest region we may not be producing a lot of rice, but we produce cassava, we produce plantains, we produce cocoa yam, and much more. And so, notwithstanding the difficulties that we face during this sociopolitical crisis, we can all testify to the fact that there is gradual return to normalcy. Even though the launching is coming in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Southwest Regional Delegate of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mr. Jackson Toppy, advised farmers to follow strictly the barrier measures in order for them to stay healthy and to feed the country. To the farmers, they are very happy. We are satisfied with what we have received. We received a truck and chemicals for cocoa and fertilizer. Actors in the agricultural sector in the Southwest region have called on the farmers to use the farm puts judiciously for a better output in 2021.
The Social Democratic Front Party, SDF, is holding its National Executive Council meeting in Yaoundé to bounce back to prominence after its dismal performances in recent elections, as well as internal wranglings within the leadership of the party. Gilbert Ongene was at the opening of the next meeting, chaired by Nijan Fundi, and put together this report. Officials of the Social Democratic Front Party, the SDF, have been quick to debunk assertions that there is a power struggle between Honorable Nietzsche, who is absent at this meeting, and Joshua Oshi for the leadership of the party after John Fundy hands over to the younger generation. What we know is that in a, any political party, there are contrary uh, views. And we should take uh, 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 all the positive uh, ideas from the views to build a, a great party. To have uh, in an agenda the Reconciliation Committee, the report of the Reconciliation Committee. And that report was put set up because uh, there were internal problems due to the, our participation in the last uh, by-election. The main issues on the table in this in-camera deliberation, according to party officials, are the redynamization of some organs of the party which have gone dormant and the revision of the electoral laws of the country. It is expected that the Social Democratic Front emerges stronger than ever before from this conclave. Zero. Back to the southwest region where section presidents of the CPDM have been urged to ensure the CPDM validation exercise in FACO is a success. The appeal was made during a recent meeting attended by the party members in the southwest region. Henry McCauley tells us more. The meeting was attended by an impressive number of CBDM members from the seven sections of the party in FACO. Amongst them were members of parliament, senators, CBDM mayors, councillors, and members of the FACO elite. Addressing the CBDM members at the meeting ground, the head of the CBDM permanent divisional delegation for FACO, Honorable Emilia Munjuali Faka, said because of the strategic importance of the validation exercise, the rules governing the operations must be fully respected. Section presidents should work with all the stakeholders on the ground, should be able to come out with a document that clearly shows ourselves to branches, to subsections, and to the section level. The chairman of our party, through the secretary general, has asked us to come to the field and coordinate the activities because, of course, the section presidents are the political heads of their sections. So we are here to coordinate, to assist them to make sure that the exercise is properly done. To make sure that party members and officials had a full understanding of the process, Honorable Emilia Munjua Lifaka created a question and answer session during which time the worries of party members and officials in attendance were provided answers. Before the end of the launch, Honorable Emilia Munjua Lifaka donated 2 million CFA francs to support the validation exercise in FACO. The African Parliamentarian Network on Development Evaluation is poised to ensure that funds allocated for growth initiatives are properly utilized for the benefit of communities. Meantime, resolutions have been taken to guarantee that youth are adequately informed on entrepreneurial schemes to reduce unemployment. Esther Kima has the details. The role of these parliamentarians is to ensure that evaluation evidence is used for strengthening oversight, budgeting, legislation and policy making. The network's president, Honorable Elise Pokosindumbe, recalls their vision to promote development, effectiveness and inclusive growth. This in all spheres of life. To make the loss, you have to evaluate if the loss which you've made has been utilized in the right form. To help, supervise, and evaluate not only in health, not only in security, not only in morality, and also to satisfy the population we represent. While they enhance their capacity to demand and utilize assessment results, the members of the parliamentary network for the promotion of entrepreneurship draw up a work plan for the General Assembly. We are going to continue to uh, help uh, youngsters to uh, maybe launch their own project and uh, also... 
they will be supporting job creation plans and explore policy developments, operational and pedagogic impediments. Despite our efforts, COVID-19 plunged many families into mourning and seriously hampered the functioning of our economy and society. You're watching the news on the CRTV. Let's cut into the second canto and talk about talk more about COVID. And this time we take you to the North region that has succeeded to stay the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic thanks to the measures put in place by health professionals in that part of the country. To know more about this, let's get over to the Public Health Emergency Center with updates. That is with you, Baldwin Tama. Hello, Baldwin. Good evening to you, Ben and Bumagana. It remains a main, the main concern for most health professionals in the different regions of Cameroon. In the North region, uh, they have been worried with uh, the uh, COVID-19 uh, rate so far, with uh, uh, new cases recorded, 56 new persons tested positive for COVID-19 as of the 3rd of March this year, 2021, taking the number of persons tested positive for COVID-19 to 762 ever since we had the outbreak of this pandemic in the country and no new case of a person who died of COVID-19 recorded in that part of the country recently uh, with uh, the, the number of persons who have died ever since we had the outbreak of COVID-19 in the North region that stands at 19 so far with the death rate that stands at 2.5 percent and the new recoveries we've not noticed uh, uh, many persons who recovered from COVID-19 17 of them in number with the total recovery rate a uh, number of persons who recovered so far uh, from COVID-19 ever since we had the outbreak of these survivors in the north region of Cameroon that stands at 665 with uh, the clarion call from a public health experts health professionals in the north region of Cameroon which happens to be the same like in the other regions of for the country that of uh, uh, reminding the population of for the necessity to continue respecting the different outline barrier measures uh, together to stop the spread of COVID-19 not only in Cameroon but in the north region of the country Country. Back to you, Benin Bumagana. Thank you very much. Baldwin Sama van Cayman. Cameroon and Tunisia have engaged to foster bilateral relations between both countries in the domain of arts, especially contemporary arts and plastic arts. This is one of the outcomes of the audience granted a Tunisian ambassador to Cameroon, His Excellency Karin Ben Becha, by Arts and Culture Minister Bidung Pat. At the end of the audience, Emanuela Vemu interviewed the Tunisian ambassador to Cameroon for the 7.30 News. And this is the excerpt she edited for the news. We have discussed about uh, many topics, uh, the most important of them was the cinema industry, the books uh, industry, uh, the museum uh, governance uh, and the capacity building uh, in many other uh, fields uh, as uh, even in the uh, fields between the two ministries of uh, culture. This time, the mayor of the Yaoundé One Council, Abuna Jean-Marie, has launched a hygiene and sanitation campaign to clean gutters and riverbeds in his municipality. The operation, which involves about 530 volunteers, is intended to create a healthy and secure environment. Details with Kwanchua Marie Cledo, Sierra TV Center. Blocked gutters and floods are some of the environmental hazards caused by poor household waste management in order to decongest the river birds and gutters for free flow of water. The mayor of Yaoundé One municipality, Abuna Jean Marie and his team have decided to embark on the hygiene and sanitation campaign. As the mayor said in his slogan, he wishes to have a clean and a pleasant council. So the objective of this program is to clean up all the rivers, that is to remove all 
about the household waste that the population and uh, some families threw in the river does not facilitate the water flow. And to prevent any flood so that his population lives in a clean area. The project, which involves about 500 volunteers, has been highly saluted by the inhabitants of the locality. I encourage the initiative. Yeah, so I would like to thank Mr. Omer and his staff for the work they are trying to do. Mayor Abunajang Mari and his deputies were on the field to preach by example. The late Lieutenant Colonel Sunday Lawrence Faw, who served in the Cameroon military corps for over 30 years, has been buried in Bamenda. The retired military official has been described as a development agent in his native Ndu village, that is in the Ndonga Mountain Division of the Northwest Region. The late Colonel encouraged municipal authorities to go for solar energy to resolve the chronic electricity crisis in the area. Kilo Valerie with more. Mankan Metropolitan Cathedral in Bamenda. Tribute are on for the late Lieutenant Colonel Sunday Lawrence for who was a Catholic faithful, but also a development agent. It was of the view that we can redress the energy to the, the lapses within our municipality by going solar. We had some new funding from FECOM where we decided to do uh, street lighting using solar. The retired military figure was among only 10 from the northwest and southwest regions admitted into the Combined Services Military Academy, Mian Yaoundé. Within 30 years, he rose to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel in 1989 before his retirement seven years later. The presence of the commander of the 5th Joint Military Region, Brigadier General Kavale, and the commander of the 5th Joint Gendarmerie Region, General Ekongwese, at the Mankan Metropolitan Cathedral, and at the burial ground at GRA, upstation Bamenda, is perceived as a sign of recognition for the services offered by the departed military official, who was also the prince of the Ndo Palace. Another sad moment is a memorial service. A memorial mass was said in honor of the uh, a health, public health icon and multidimensional scholar, Professor Daniel Noni Lantum, who died last February 15 and was buried in his hometown, Kumba. Family, friends and colleagues used the occasion to celebrate the man who impacted lives with the ingenuity in research, his publications and activism. Beatrice Losamba reports on that memorial and Thanksgiving Mass in honor of the, the super scholar at Invoga, the Catholic parish in Yaoundé. We'll definitely be coming back to that uh, report uh, by B by Beatrice uh, uh, Los Samba. But yeah, with that, uh, we come to the end of this edition of the newscast. Beatrice Los Samba's report will be coming in subsequent editions. Thank you very much for watching. At 8.30, you are going to get uh, uh, Lucrece coming in for the news in French. I'll be back here tomorrow for what is making news. Good night. you once again to put on your face masks, to wash your hands regularly, and to consult a physician or any other health personnel if you notice any symptoms. This is the only way to save lives and to curb the spread of the virus. Info.